Hi, and welcome to the fourth part of this lecture. This lecture is going to be on circuit optimization, and the goal of circuit optimization is to obtain the simplest implementation for any given function. The word optimization is a more formal way of saying simplification, and it's performed using some specific procedure or algorithm. And we usually have some sort of cost criteria that we measure so that we can work out how simple the circuit is. Some cost criteria that we're going to use is the literal count, L, the gate input cost, G, or the gate input cost with knots, GN. In terms of the literal cost, remembering that a literal is some variable like ABC, XYZ, and the literal cost is then the number of times that that literal appears. We just simply count it. So for the first example here, we have F equaling to these, and there's a total of eight literals. So L equals eight. The second one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So which solution is best? Well, in terms of literal cost, the best solution is this first one because there's eight literals. In terms of the gate input cost, we say this is the number of inputs to the gates in the implementation, and this corresponds exactly to the given equation where G is just the literals plus the number of group terms, and GN is G plus the number of distinct complemented single literals. So for a sum of product or product of sums, it can be found for the equations by first finding all the literal appearances, L, which is what we did in the previous slide. And then if we want to find G, we have all the literal appearances plus the number of terms, excluding any single literal terms. So this is only terms that are grouped together. And if we want to find GN, then this is G plus the number of distinct complemented single literals. So for this example, let's do this first one. We count first the literals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so that would be L equaling to 8. To get G, we also count the terms that are not single. So there's one term, another term, another term. So this is 8 plus 3, giving 11. And then for GN, we have the value of G being 11, plus all the single complemented literals. So this is one of them, and these are two more. So the total GN is 14, 11 plus 3. For this second example, we can go through first and count the literals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. L equals to 11. And then G being 11 plus the number of terms that are not single literals. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 more. So 15. And then GN includes the complemented single literals. One, two, three, four more, so 19. And for the last example, we have number of literals being two, four, six, eight, ten, and the number of terms that are not single literals is 10 plus one, two, three, four, so 14, and including the complemented single literals, including another one, two, three, four, gives a total of 18. So then which solution is best? Well, clearly the first one is best both in terms of G, the gate input count, and also GN. Here's another example here. We have the actual circuit drawn up and we can count first of all the number of literals, one, two, three, four, five, and it corresponds to these inputs here in blue dots. The gate input count is L plus these two more terms, so seven. And then if we also include the gate input count with the knots, then we have these two complemented single literals. And so we add two more. This is also two more inverters that are in the picture. So let's look at another cost criteria example. And here we've got two circuits. The first one shown is a representation of this function. And there are six literals. And we get that by counting one, two, three, 4, 5, 6 gives the literal count. In terms of the gates, we have the literals plus the terms. So we have two terms, one term here, another term here. So we've got 6 plus 2 is 8. And then in terms of including the negations, then we have another 3. So 8 plus 3 gives 11. For the second one, there's six literals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you include these three terms, 2, 3, then we've got the gate input count of 9, and if you include the negations, another 3 gives you 12. So when comparing those two, 
even though the number of literals is six in both the examples. In fact, this first one is better because it has a smaller gate input count and a better gate input count when we include the knots. So this is the one that you should select. In terms of Boolean function optimization, when we minimize the gate input or the literal cost, then we also reduce the circuit cost. And the reason why we want to reduce the gate input cost is because it's currently a good measure for contemporary logic implementations. Since the gate input cost is usually proportional to the transistors and the wires used in implementing the logic circuit. The representation of gate inputs is particularly important when we're measuring circuits that have more than two levels. Because typically, as the number of levels increases, then the literal costs represent a smaller portion of the actual circuit cost. Because in general, more and more gates will have no inputs from outside the circuit itself. We use Boolean algebra and graphical techniques as tools to minimize the cost criteria values. But an important question we have to ask is, when should we stop trying to reduce the cost? And when do we know that we've got the minimum cost? In the next part of this lecture, we'll introduce a graphical technique called Kano maps, or K-maps for short. So see you then.